the glory year. And there it is. There it is. The championship goes to Leeds United. The fans invade the pitch. They're absolutely delighted. And really, what great scenes at the moment. Well, we didn't really see one on the pitch after all the trouble we've had early on. But they've come on the pitch to welcome the heroes. And in some ways, I suppose you can't blame them. It may be natural enthusiasm. I hope it's nothing more than that. Leeds United have not only got promotion, Leeds United are the champions of the second division. They are back in the first division. It's a great day for the city of Leeds. They are back as champions. A return to the big time. Leeds United are back in the first division. The season of 89-90 will be long remembered by those fanatical supporters. But the planning for the return to the top flight began some months before. In September 1988, Leeds sacked Billy Bremner, and a new man stepped into the Heron Road hot seat. The welcome mat was out for Howard Wilkinson, a shrewd tactician with a reputation for getting teams promoted. Why should I be different? Because uh, I believe that I can be successful at managing football teams uh, the four teams that I have if you like five teams that I have seriously managed have all been successful and uh, I see no reason uh, given a fair wind why that should change here but Wilkinson was no miracle worker unless he had the troops at his disposal after six months in the job he moved into the transfer market with determination and big names with big reputations arrived in West Yorkshire from Manchester United, there was Gordon Strachan. From Wimbledon, there came a character called Vinnie Jones. And from north of the border, a return to Yorkshire for defender Mel Sterling. This is a big, big club. This is, should be up there at the top of the first division as well. Um, and I'm looking to take them back with Howard and the rest of the players that come and the players that are here just now to get back there, because there's nothing like the first division. I mean, everyone's saying to me about the money. I mean, it doesn't worry me. You know, Leeds thought I was worth that. Wimbledon thought I was worth that, so it was paid. I mean, I think the price of players nowadays is absolutely ridiculous anyway, but, you know, that's, that's uh, the way it's gone. If you read your press clippings, you uh, come across as the sort of bloke that parents used to frighten their children with. Do you think you're uh, really as bad as you painted? <laughs> no, I think I'm quite good looking, actually. <laughs> the lads in the first division are probably saying, thank God he's, he's not around next season, but... Uh, We'll be back the season after with Leeds United and we're not worried whether hated or loved. I was on a good contract to put Glasgow Rangers. Howard Wilkinson's offered me a good contract to set Leeds United. Uh, but no, it's not, it's not the money. He's bought some good quality players and I'm sure that Leeds United would get back in first division with players what he's bought. When I was at Sheffield Wednesday, I think he was learning the game there, even though he got Sheffield Wednesday to first division. And now he's come to Leeds United. I think he, he, he's definitely a better manager. And I'm sure the players what he has bought will be working hard uh, to get Leeds back where they belong. So the scribes eagerly awaited their first look at Wilco's new army. The bookies made them hot favourites for promotion. So the stage was set for the opener at Newcastle. The Leeds new boys were there, but so too was the mighty Quinn of St James's Park. Chance for Quinn, and there's his hat-trick right in the middle of the second half. Vic Quinn has recorded a hat-trick for Newcastle United. Ball played in from the right. Leeds again, the marking was four, and Quinn hooked it in right-footed. It went straight through Mervyn Day. Don't blame Day for that. He had little or no chance at all. And it's a hat-trick for Mick Quinn with still just over 20 minutes of the game to go. And it's now Newcastle 3, Leeds 2. So Leeds beaten 5-2. Hardly the ideal start to the new campaign. Middlesbrough followed five days later, and Leeds got their first win. In September, Leeds gave an early indication that the big money signings may pay off. Vinnie Jones had quickly become the darling of the fans. He enjoyed this moment against Ipswich. 12 minutes gone and a fourth corner for Leeds United. A lot of pressure from the Whites. The ball comes in. Bad great header from Jones. And Vinnie Jones opens his account for Leeds United. He's absolutely delighted. It's Leeds United 1, the Ipswich 0. It's the head of Vinnie Jones and he's the local hero. Some impressive victories followed, but the London press had their own view of Leeds' style. Uncomplimentary words were in evidence after West Ham had been beaten at Upton Park. December came with Leeds and Sheffield United setting the pace. But on December the 9th, there were worrying scenes at Ayrson Park. A number of Leeds fans were involved in a crush on the terraces. For a time, the Hillsborough disaster vividly came into view, but thankfully, the injuries were minor. Leeds won 2-0, but the talking point surrounded the anxiety on the terraces. 
Hard Wilkinson and Mel Sterling. Well, to be honest, I didn't realise uh, it looked really bad. Uh, and the referee's same play on, and then obviously he had to stop it. But all, all that went through my mind was the Hillsborough disaster again. Um, you know, unfortunately, I wasn't at Hillsborough then when it happened, but you just thought at that time that something like that was going to happen again. How easy was it to concentrate after that? It's, it's difficult to concentrate when something like that happens. Well, initially, I, I couldn't say anything other than try to get them to read my lips and trying to say to them, look, calm down. Uh, Football's not important at the moment. I don't know what the problem is, I don't know who's caused it, but, uh, you know, it's being dealt with, and if, if everybody's calm and orderly, we can sort it out. The Seagulls flew into Adam Road a week later, and Leeds shot them down. It's a long journey back to Brighton, and when you've been well beaten, the M25 orbital must roll on, and on, and on. It's a massive throw in flicked on, near post, still on the floor, and in comes! John Hendry to score on his return to the side. Nobody cleared it up. Hendry arrived in the six-yard area, and Brighton tried to sort themselves out, but not in time. Hendry scores, four minutes to half-time. It's now Leeds 2, Brighton 0. So, to Christmas and the halfway stage of the season, already some were talking off promotion. Would it be a return to the glory days of Hunter, Giles, Bremner and Clark? The present regime were keen to stop the comparisons. This was a new Leeds, but it did not stop the stars of yesteryear from predicting better times to come. The gentle giant and still a mighty man of Wales, John Charles. I definitely think I've got... I've seen a lot of the teams now, second division teams, and I don't think we've got anything to worry about. As I say, you can't win all the matches. And we're putting it together and we win a lot of matches, more than other people. High noon came on Boxing Day with Leeds at Bramall Lane. Friends and managers Dave Bassett and Howard Wilkinson. For 90 minutes, daggers drawn and at 2-2, a handshake that honours even. Leeds have time on their side at this stage. Here comes Joe. Little outside of the boot wall, finds Shutt. Shutt jinks inside, still going Shutt. That's a marvellous goal. Well taken by Carl Shutt. And it was a lovely ball from Jones that put him through. And the whole of the Leeds bench rise to their feet. They know the significance of that goal early in the second half. Jones the perfect ball, shut jinking inside, left-footed across the face of the goal. Tracy Beaton, six minutes into the second half. It's now Sheffield United 2, Leeds United 2. But one or two flutters arose on the way to promotion. Even the most biased of United fans would not claim that April was a good month. But even earlier than that, the smooth road had one or two holes in it. At the turn of the year, this goal settled matters in favour of Barnsley at Oakwell. Here's a shot coming in now, and that's gone in! That's a goal for Barnsley, and it's beautifully taken. The shot came in from the edge of the area, and Barnsley take the lead here in the most dramatic of circumstances. Darren Foreman, wearing number nine, has scored, and Leeds United find themselves 1-0 down against Mel Machen's Barnsley. Darren Foreman, 39 minutes. It's Barnsley 1 that leads 0. A fine goal from Darren Foreman. Now, what about a cut run for Howard's boys? Will Jason Dazell tore up the Wembley tickets in the third round? As Thompson swings it left footed, and there comes the header, and there's the first goal of the game. A header right to the far corner. I think it's Jason Dazell who got onto the end of it, and leads again, missing their man inside the area. Dazell, the man to pick up on the ball as it came in from the left hand side from Thompson, and they'll be ruining the marking again. It's let them down over the Christmas and New Year period. It's let them down again in the FA Cup. Nine minutes gone in the second half, an uphill battle for Leeds United now. Nine minutes gone, Leeds nil. Ipswich won. So it needed a big push or a big man to put Leeds on the right road again. And Wilkinson turned to one of his old boys, Lee Chapman. We had four great years together at Sheffield Wednesday and uh, I see no reason why we can't have uh, three and a half good years here at Leeds. You've obviously been brought here as a striker. You've got a, a good pass record as a striker. So looking forward to putting some in the net at Ellen Road. Yes, I mean, Howard has brought me mainly to score goals. Um, my record over the years has sort of been, been up there with, with most of them and I'm just hoping I can carry it on um, I can't see any reason why we ca I can't do that and Lee produced an immediate reward with the opening goal at Blackburn Leeds were leading with one minute to go and then a penalty to the home side now Mervyn Day saves penalties at Stoke in the zone of data he has a good record at saving penalties we're now in injury time that is drama at Ewood Park it's Blackburn 1 Leeds United 2 David May, big, tall, blonde lad, Mervyn Day, vastly experienced, faces up, 
crucial penalty. Blackburn Rovers one, Leeds two. Here comes the penalty now. He comes forward. Brian Hill gets everybody back outside the area. Here comes the penalty. And he misses it. He misses it. He hits it over the top of the bar. And penalties figured in the league game with Stoke. But this time, Mervyn Day was not going to let anyone spoil his celebration. The ball was not through. It looked like Biggins may have been brought down. It's difficult to know who the offender was, but George Tyson pointed to the spot. I saw him point to the spot. And it's going to be a penalty which Wayne Biggins, I think, will take for Stoke City. Well, there's drama here at Ellen Road. We're approaching 51 minutes. It's Mervyn Day playing in his 600th league game. And we could have drama here now as Biggins puts the ball on the spot. And Wayne Biggins, well, this will be a marvellous moment for Leeds fans if Day could save it. The fans don't agree with the penalty award, but booing around the ground. Here comes Biggins. Biggins against Day. One, two, three. Biggins cut it. Day saves it. Well, what a great moment for Mervyn Day. Indeed it was, and Leeds were back to their best. Talk of promotion was high again. Even Howard Wilkinson was a little less cautious when talking about going up. I don't think there's a danger of complacency. I mean, what we're now virtually saying is, you know, with a lap to go, you're out in front. Now, now, now shows that you're winners. Now shows that you can kick for home. Now shows that you can increase the distance between you and the trailing pack. But at the end of February and early March, one or two hiccups. Before that, we had one of the most dramatic finishes in recent times at Ellen Road. Hull and Leeds were locked sharing six goals. In the final moments of the game, little Scott Strachan found the key. Strachan knocks the ball forward to Jones. Jones, good play by Vinnie Jones. Gets the ball through to Strachan. Great chance of Gordon Strachan. Shoots, scores! Gordon Strachan has scored for Leeds United. A glorious goal! from the little Scott, a lovely ball from Vinnie Jones, Wilkinson and Hennigan are off the bench, they're absolutely elated, it's a goal, it's a goal for Leeds United, it could be one of the most vital goals all season, they're going to win this game now, they're going to win it by four goals to three, it's a glorious goal from Gordon Strachan, one of the highlights of the season, no doubt about that, the little man that took it quite beautifully, and Leeds United have sprung victory out of a trap, they're going to win this one by four goals to three Hull will just kick off and surely that'll be it now remember we were telling you about a worrying loss in form during late February and early March while well, Leeds journeyed down the M1 to meet Watford and face their sternest critics the southern press the scribes were saying we told you so after this moment Oh, and far side and clean away, Rod Thomas. This time they've sprung the offside trap, day to beat, with the chip. Beglin, will he get there? No, he won't. Lovely goal from Rod Thomas, and Leeds punished for the offside trap. The ball went long to the far side. Thomas was clean through. Day came off his line. He met the player, and he made the narrow angle there. But Thomas just lobbed the keeper, and Beglin couldn't rescue Leeds. We've had now 32 minutes, and Watford get their just rewards for taking on the Leeds offside trap. Watford won. Leeds nil. But Leeds hit back. One week later, the season and the hopes were tottering on the slopes of the manor ground. Oxford led 2-0 at half-time. But the second half, a different story. And a personal triumph for Lee Chapman. There's about 12 and a half minutes to go in this one. Foster is beaten to it. In the end, Speed. Now, what can he do? Speed can get the crossing. Surely he can. It's a great chance for Chapman. There's number four. Lee Chapman's second goal. And Leeds have scored again. And now I think they're home and dry. It's 4-2 for Leeds United. It's a superb fight back. And here is going to be some vital points. And it's Lee Chapman who scored it on 32, 27, 29 and 32 in the second half. And you can't argue with that. It's three goals in five minutes. It means it's Oxford 2, Leeds United 4. I'll have to get the calculator out here. Oxford 2, Leeds 4. It's going well for Leeds United. Indeed it was. That set Leeds on a fine run. The Hungry Wolves put an end to that at Molyneux. So back home, and a welcome to neighbours. No, not Kylie or Jason, but Bradford City. They came to Allen Road as firm underdogs. Former Bradford man John Hendry was now a vital part in Wilkinson's plans. And he saw it as another step on the promotion ladder. As everyone knows, Leeds has, has been a sleeping giant over the past few years. And, and everybody wants to see them in the first division with the supports I have. Uh, and obviously, I mean, it's good for the players to go up there as well because at the end of the day, there's only one stage, and that's the first division. But quite often, a good drama does not give a predictable ending. The underdogs were determined to upset the promotion apple cart. 
Jones takes the throw, far side of the field. Up goes the head, the chance, goal! From Gary Speed for Leeds United. The young man was there when it mattered. The header came on, Speed flicked it nonchalantly forward. Tomlinson was beaten, and it's Leeds United who break the deadlock in the West Yorkshire derby. And all around me, the home fans are absolutely delighted. It's Leeds United 1, Bradford City 0. Gary Speed has scored a vital goal for Leeds United in the West Yorkshire derby, and surely that could be another goal towards Leeds United opening the door to the first division. Was it a penalty? Wasn't it? Brian Tinian against Mervyn Day. The cop roar. The Bradford fans hold their breath. Tinian comes up, edge of the area, strikes it, left foot, scores for Bradford City. Fine goal by Brian Tinian. And even the Bradford directors stand up and cheer to that one. Took his penalty quite beautifully there, did Brian Tinian. No doubt about that. And the repercussions can be felt round Ellen Road there. Leeds won, Bradford City won, and a splendidly taken penalty from Brian Tinian. Well, was it a penalty or was it not? Really, it's deeply open to debate, and all those things are. But Brian Tinian was there where it mattered on 87 minutes. He's pulled back a penalty, and now we've got some frantic minutes to go for both. It's one apiece, and a very important goal for Bradford City. Now, plastic is fairly flexible, so they say, but it's not so great to play on. Oldham gave Leeds a further attack of the promotion jitters, and Good Friday was not so good at all. But former Leeds boss Jimmy Armfield had these encouraging words. I still think Leeds will get up. I think they need three wins, and I think it's a distinct possibility that they can do it. At the moment, they're a bit edgy. They are a bit edgy. Is it caused by the fact that they're up there and everyone's expecting them to walk into the first division because of the impressive season they've had? Yes, I think I think that's that's part of it. On the other hand, I think they've missed people like Bobby Davidson, who's been out for a while. You miss your strikers particularly, and I think um, if they get him back, one or two goals. I think it's, it's a shortage of goals really. I think more than anything else. But no shortage of goals on Easter Monday. The return fixture with Sheffield United. Over Christmas, it was on as even, but at Allen Road, the second meeting was a one-horse race, and a young Leeds winger was the quickest to the finishing post. Gary Speed is in the Sheffield United half. He's approaching the area now. The youngster shoots. He's got in for Gary Speed. Number four, Howard Wilkinson, Mick Hennigan off the bench. One or two supporters enter the field of play, and Gary Speed on 90 minutes has made it four for Leeds United. The season was drawing to a close, and Barnsley came to Adam Road seeking the double over Leeds. It had been a magnificent season for the Leeds goalkeeper, but on this occasion, it was not Mervyn's day. Baker now with the goal kick long and downfield. Day comes and then he doesn't do it. O'Connell gets there. That's a disaster. And Day holds his hands to his head. And Brendan O'Connell has come on, the former Huddersfield man, and he scored for Barnsley. Day started to come and then he didn't. O'Connell was first there. And I'm afraid you've got to blame the keeper. And I think he's blaming himself. He should have come once he decided to do. And then O'Connell had an open goal. There's nothing that Fairclough or Haddock could do, backpedalling towards the goal. And day is beaten, 69 minutes gone, Leeds won, Barnsley won. Any criticism of an individual at the moment is a criticism of the team. Um, undoubtedly, we face the, most, the two most important games this club has had for many a year, probably a decade. And if we're going to get the best possible results from those two games, uh, we need everybody pulling in the same direction. The first game of the two was Leicester at Allen Road. They came to spoil the promotion party. Leeds went ahead through Stirland. McAllister equalised. News reached us that both Newcastle and Sheffield were winning. A Leeds victory was absolutely vital. It needed something special. The little man conjured up that tiny bit of magic. Leeds have both their subs on. Mel Stirland, their goal scorer. Gets the ball in, up go the heads, headed clear, hook clear by McAllister, only as far as Strachan. Strachan with a shot, great goal from Gordon Strachan, a glorious goal from the little Scott. Oh, that was tremendous. It was a marvellous shot from Strachan. The goalkeeper Hodge was beaten, the noise electrifying. Howard Wilkinson and Alan Sutton come onto the pitch, so too does Benny Jones. It's the 18th goal of the season for Gordon Strachan. And what a timely goal that was. 
It's Leeds 2, Leicester 1. 85 minutes gone. It's Gordon Strachan. He's the difference. He's the class. He's the goal scorer. Leeds 2, Leicester 1. Is that a goal that will take him to the first division? We'll have to wait and see. But it's a goal worthy of winning any game. Leeds 2, Leicester 1. And so Bournemouth for the grand finale. The hooligan minority threatened to ruin the big day. Elsewhere, it was Middlesbrough versus Newcastle and Leicester against Sheffield United. The point situation was tight. Leeds 82 from 45. Sheffield the same, but with an inferior goal difference. The Geordie boys were two points adrift. A win for Leeds and the title was theirs. At half-time, Sheffield were home and dry at Filbert Street. Newcastle were level in the northeast, but their hopes were soon to collapse. At Dean Court, it needed a big man for the big job. Enter Lee Chapman. Barclough is up with the attack. Power over the area, far side of the field. There's Chris Kamara. Kamara, a lovely cross, a chance for Chapman. Yes! Lee Chapman, a score for Leeds United. A glorious head from Chapman. It was a great cross from Chris Kamara. And they're absolutely delighted. Leeds take the lead here. One or two fans onto the field, but they're quickly ushered off by the stewards. And that could be the goal from the big man, Lee Chapman, that has opened the door to the first division. We need cool, we need calm heads, because on 50 minutes, it's AFC Bournemouth nil, Leeds United 1, the powerful head of Lee Chapman. Dave Callahan, you and I saw all of the games this season, and you in particular followed Leeds right through to the exciting end. Were they the worthy champions? No doubt about it, in my opinion. Leeds were the champions of the second division. Sheffield United ran them close. I'm delighted that Dave Bassett's boys have made it with Leeds. These were the big two in the second division. All right, Newcastle and Sunderland, and many more can have their claims. But Leeds and Sheffield United, the most consistent. And Leeds just a little bit ahead of their rivals. I think you can look back and say they won it at home. All right, Barnsley breached the Ellen Road Fortress when they won that game in April. But it was a tremendous season at Ellen Road in front of those fanatical supporters. Some marvellous games as well, some marvellous performances. A great win at West Ham in the early part of the season. The win at Blackburn stands out when Lee Chapman scored on his debut. A tremendous game at home home to hold, that was the most exciting. The marvellous track and goal against Leicester and that excellent away win at Roker Park Sunderland to silence the Roker roar. All the squad were heroes, but who on the playing staff, in your opinion, had the biggest influence? Gordon Strachan. He was runner-up as the, the player of the year, Chris Fairclough, with the supporters club. Gordon Strachan was that little bit of class. When Leeds were struggling, he was there to pull them out of the mire. That marvellous goal against Leicester sums it up. The most crucial goal for me of the season. And well done as well to Christopher Fairclough, a worthy player of the year, voted by the supporters club. He was the linchpin in defence. We have to look ahead. The next step now for Howard Wilkinson. Howard Wilkinson has said already he will give the side and the squad that has taken them to second division promotion and the title a chance in the first division. But he's going to be realistic. He's a shrewd tactician, a shrewd manager who's done extremely well at Ellen Road. He will buy in the summer. Leeds will not just want to survive in the first division. They will want to become a major force in football once again. And what does this all mean to the city of Leeds? It's marvellous once again to have a first division football club in the city. It's a first division ground with a first division crowd and now we've got a first division club once again. I'm sure that Leeds United will build on this success and go from strength to strength. Leeds United, champions of Division 2. All white strip. Famous all white strip. All white strip. Famous all white strip.
Callum Dennis or Big Lee Jack. We are Leeds, we are Leeds, we are Leeds. Oh. We are Leeds, we are Leeds, we are Leeds. Oh. We are Leeds, we are Leeds, we are Leeds. Oh. We are Leeds, we are Leeds, we are Leeds. Oh. We are Leeds, we are Leeds, we are Leeds. Leads by the crew, and we are the only ones left just about at Adam Road. The lights are going out over the cop, out on a night of celebration. Under three hours ago, this stadium was filled nearly to capacity with supporters claiming and acclaiming their side, the side that they've been so proud of this season. Peter Drury, the flavour of the evening. How did you view the events? The flavour of the evening, Miles, was sweet without a hint of sour. I'm glad to say, really. When was the last time you saw two penalties deliberately missed in the same game? Both sides had a penalty. Both sides decided not to score it because they felt a miscarriage of justice had been incurred. Delightful to see that from the teams. Delightful also to see 22,500 people come here, acclaim their side, as you say, and go home with a feeling of warmth, a feeling of excitement, and a feeling of anticipation for next year and the first division football at Ellen Road. We have to mention what happened outside the ground at Bournemouth, but tonight was all about uh, releasing the tensions that have built up since, since Saturday and the events of the weekend. It almost seemed as if the city of Leeds had de denied that moment of celebration, but not so tonight. Absolutely not, and what a stark contrast it was. Outside the ground tonight, people had to queue. People, often season ticket holders who are used to strolling straight into the ground, they had to queue. They queued in orderly fashion, men, women, children, families, all happily together, coming in to see an exhibition game of football, which was played competitively, but in a friendly spirit as well. Everything was right about tonight. Leeds manager Howard Wilkinson appealed to the supporters before the game over the microphone in the public address to eject any individual known to be connected with the Bournemouth violence. Now the crowd responded with a, a sense of passion and goodwill which was reflected by the players on the field as Peter was just saying. They've been wanting to release all those emotions ever since the weekend. A night of celebration then for a sleeping giant that's been waking up for a long time and is now fully awake and back to the big time. Above all, the warmth of feeling towards the players in particular will stand out in my mind tonight. The skipper, Gordon Strachan, there's no doubt who really is everybody's favourite. He's provided the difference, a class player. But the whole squad were acclaimed tonight by a set of supporters who dearly love them and wish them well in the first division. We have benefited from tonight's experience, so has the club as well, and also the country, England were looking to, the whole of England was looking to this. Genoa were here not only to play football, but to relay their vision of English football to a very nervous Italy. It will be a very pleasant surprise for those back in Italy when the Genoa players and officials return home. The night belongs to West Yorkshire. The season belongs to Leeds United. From Peter Drury.